He's the co-host of All the Smoke. Uh, we have told you before, proud to be in business with All the Smoke Productions. We're starting this DraftKings network for everybody. And he and Steven Jackson are two of the first, along with McAfee and some of these other businessmen, who have recognized a lane that's specific for them where they can make content and have a second career after their playing days. So I'm proud of a lot of the stuff they're making. Bully Ball with Rachel Nichols and Boogie Cousins, Taking in the Truth, Kevin Garnett and Paul Pierce. And you can hear him with Steven Jackson interviewing Keyshawn Johnson, Rod Strickland, Snoop Dogg here. I don't know. I The last time I saw you, you were excited about one of these that wasn't even on here. It was three hours with somebody. I won't mention it. But uh, what else do you have up uh, coming up here, Matt? Because you guys have been doing a lot of these, and they're very popular. We got you coming up this Thursday. Uh, we're dropping your episode. So to, uh, in two days, we'll have your episode up. But, uh, you know, as you mentioned, just really excited to get the process going. Um, the, the, the responsibility of and, 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 and the blessing to be able to create content uh, for DraftKings and be able to partner with Metalark and, um, you know, just kind of see where it goes. I'm really excited. You know, we obviously got a chance to sit down in New York with each other a few weeks ago and really kind of fellowship and get to know each other better. And it, it made the partnership to me even stronger. So definitely excited to get the ball rolling in 2024. Was that the episode you were thinking he was excited I to was promote? Not, no, right. he caught me off guard. It sounded like I was leading him to that. That was not the one I was talking about. got three about. hours with you, no, huh? That's not the one. I was talking about someone else. But uh, how did it go? Uh, how, how did it go with Keyshawn? That's the latest one, right? Keyshawn was good. You know, Keyshawn is a great energy and, and obviously has tremendous stories from his playing days to his draft party to really his transition into media, which he's been doing for a long time and doing very successfully. So, uh, you know, Keyshawn was a, a great interview. Got a chance to go do his show about a week and a half ago. So, yeah, the ball keeps rolling. Uh, we continuing to drop episodes that uh, people are enjoying. And, and I'm definitely excited for people to see your episode, Dan, because obviously, with all due respect, I understand what you're about and, and your platform and your audience. But I don't know if our audience does. And I think we had such just a, a deep, interesting a uh, heartfelt, cool conversation with you. So I'm always excited about kind of that crossover, if you can call it that, um, kind of into our world. So definitely excited about um, dropping your episode in a few days and see well, the response we get. Without over-explaining, I need to tell you that Steven Jackson and Matt Barnes, one of the many reasons I admire them is because they managed in that league for 15-plus years to, guys, to fit into every environment, always being their most authentic self, always being a great teammate. And so it's the media brand that they're building now – and people are going to be comfortable sitting next to them. Also, I want to put this in front of you, Matt, because I know you're competitive and I know you're a businessman. Shannon Sharp has arrived in the space very loudly mm -hmm. and very well, mm -hmm. and he is exceptional at doing what he's mm -hmm. doing. And now it is elevated to where he is fighting Mike Epps because of something that Cat Williams said on the <laughs> podcast. And so I, I want to play this sound for the audience and for Matt Barnes and get his take on this. You mentioned my name again. Yeah. And I'm going to put the DMs. I'm gonna put I'm and I don't like doing this. Yeah. But you're lying. See, and yeah. I don't care about all that other stuff. You can say I'm gay and you can say I'm I don't care about that. Because yeah. I won't chase a lie, but yeah. I won't let you lie on my name. Yeah. Now you can say all that other stuff. I can deal with that. Mm -hmm. I don't look yeah, I and I want somebody to send it to you. And y'all been I've been seeing it in the chat. Y'all yeah. know who I'm talking about. I don't know who you're talking <laughs> about, but I'm with you. I'm a, say I'm, my name I'm, again, and I'm gonna put the I'm a, and I'm gonna release the DMs because yeah. you're lying. Yeah. You said I reached out to you to come on Club Shay Shay, and you a mofo lie. If the, him talking all that, yeah. when he wore them tight-ass leather pants, trying yeah. to be funny, yeah. but I'm going to see if you're about that. Yeah. Say my name again. Say your little joke. Get your little laugh off. Have fun. But just don't lie and said I said something yeah. when I didn't. And you know who you are, mofo. Yeah. 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 I'm calling you a mofo. Now, yeah. when I see you, Boy, I promise you, I'm gonna pull up. Yeah, yeah. I'm gonna we, pull up, and yeah. I'm gonna see if you bought that. Cause yeah. I'm, I'm bought it with you. Me too. <laughs> wow. Ocho has a great gig. Yeah, great. Ocho does have a great gig. Real yeah. quick, yeah. Uh, Matt, I'll get your thoughts. I want all your thoughts. But here is Mike Epps because you don't go with the comedians. You got to be careful going at the comedians. So here's Mike Epps coming back at him. I know this bro man is not mad at me. So many people talk crazy about you. They was on Saturday Night Live talking about you, imitating you, but now you want to fight me? Now, I'm not going to lie. I did DM you to get on the show. But I DM'd you to get on the show because you brought my name up when you were sitting there with Kat. 
He was trying to get him to talk crazy about me, but he didn't. Okay? Now, second of all, talking about pulling up on me. You're going to be an all-star. I'm going to be at the all-star in my hometown. And I'm going to see you. All right? And Ocho, you shut up and go get some eyebrows. You looking like a whole milk dud sitting there agitating. <laughs> we watched the white boy kick your ass on TV. So oh, you shut God. up. And Shay Shay, you did look like Medea sitting there. You was looking zesty. I'm not saying you gay, but you was looking zesty. You look like Big Frida sitting there. You need to take them tight ass shirts off with the muscles. <laughs> and that's it. <laughs> Go check out my special. <laughs> yeah, there it is. The <laughs> there it is. At the oh, end. shit. <laughs> so what do you have for us there? There's a lot of ground oh, to cover. Oh, man. Yeah, that's, that's a lot to unpack. I mean, first of all, you know, definitely respect uh, the lane that Shannon has created for himself and the attention he has drawn. Um, and again, I want I, I want to say this without coming off the wrong way because I don't look. Unfortunately, I don't look at anybody as competition. With all due respect, Dan, I feel like everyone there's a lane for everyone, and everyone's created that lane. And I feel like there's plenty of money to come behind those lanes. But I feel like you know, obviously, Shannon has, has taken off individually, and then him and Ocho have a great thing going on. But it's not necessarily our cup of tea, so to speak. You know, it's a completely different lane and 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 you see now obviously the uh, cat williams interview i think broke some kind of youtube record for the most views and i think that's great i mean that's a lane he's excelling in a, a lane that he's getting notoriety in and getting money in and that's great but it's not necessarily what we are trying to do you know we want to continue to kind of keep our lane and not even that that that, that what they're doing is gossip because i don't want to disrespect again what they're doing but there's just a lot of different energy going on there and, and people coming and talking their truths and telling their truths. And again, that's always great. Speak your mind. But again, that's not necessarily the lane we want to create. Well, Matt, the lane if, we if, want to if, develop. If, if I may interrupt you for a second, what you've created next to you and Steven is everyone <clears throat> is walking into something they know is authentic. And from the jump, they're comfortable. They're, they're comfortable in your interview setting. You're not professional right. interviewers. You're trying to make them right. comfortable. But Matt is saying mm -hmm. they become uncomfortable when he starts doing that stuff. Uh, um, well, what's that stuff, though? What, it, giving, Gossip. Okay, no, but it's... Yeah. It, wait a minute, though, Matt. What Shannon Sharp has now created, and this is not a small thing, is a place where black comics and black people feel like they can speak freely, even if it's Absolutely. tearing, even if it's tearing down others. Like there aren't <laughs> right. there, there aren't a lot of avenues right. for that. There is value right. in Absolutely. that. Absolutely. Yeah, no, absolutely. And I'm again, I'm not even mad at that. Again, that that's his lane and, and he's the king of that lane right now. And, and I definitely uh, respect that and, and, and wish him and his team, you know, nothing but success. Uh, but to address the other side with uh, Mike Epps is a, a good friend of me and Stack and uh, Stack got a chance to talk to him yesterday. And I was I was you know, I heard what they were talking about and it was funny. But, you know, to me, you just have to be careful. First of all, like you said, Dan, going at comedians because comedians, they tell jokes for a living. They're going to make us laugh for a living and all of us are cracking up at <laughs> just Mike's what Mike was saying and how he promoted his show at the end. But you also got to be careful, you know, when you're doing a lot of that tough talk because, uh, you know, Shannon is going to Indiana and, and uh, Indy for the All-Star game. And that's where uh, uh, Mike is from. You know what I mean? So to, to be making those kind of threats and talking about, I'm going to see you here, I'm going to see you there, and then you're going to this guy's hometown, that's not the smartest thing. So I hope for the sake of all of us, because, you know, people are fans of both of them, that they're able to just to have this conversation and kind of clear the air. But um, again, I think overall, uh, I like what Shannon is doing. I like the lane he has created for himself and, and Ocho. And you know, I wish those guys nothing but success. Matt, let's talk about this part, though, because you were famously um, somebody not to be trifled with. So when you start talking this language and they're friends of friends and and we're talking about uh, Shannon Sharp's step to the Memphis Grizzlies, like he he shouldn't throw away what he has right now in order to fight Mike Epps. That would be pretty stupid. <laughs> Well, there's another part where I, you guys didn't show, but Mike says he doesn't fight these days, and he insinuated uh, something else. And, and, and again, that's where you know we can kind of laugh and joke about this, but you know, obviously, pride plays a huge part, and ego plays a huge part, and all this kind of stuff that we kind of see. These conversations used to take place face to face, or you know, through a friend, but now these type of conversations are done on social media, where people can add gasoline to the fire. 
and hype it up and, and be a hype man the same way Ultra was being, but just kind of on a different level. So, again, I hope cooler heads prevail from that standpoint because, uh, you know, Mike is a great comic. Shannon is great is what he's doing, and, and both guys are excelling in their lane. And I hope that, uh, you know, there can come some – I'm almost positive that they're going to be able to talk it out. And, you know, you'll see Mike Epps on, uh, on Shannon's show soon, and they'll be laughing about it. I, I want to play for you some sound from Club Shay Shay. Uh, Monique, uh, I, well, not the sound from Club Shay Shay. Monique went on with Shannon Sharp and said that while she loves Shaquille O'Neal, uh, she would not listen to anything he says because he cannot keep a woman, because he is not someone who will open up to a woman. And Shaq was asked about this by Adam Lefko, and his response was a word salad that kind of denied it, but made it clear that he doesn't trust opening up to women. <laughs> Do you open up emotionally to women? And you said no. You shouldn't do that or else they'll throw it back in your face. Shannon Sharp brought it up to your good friend Monique, and Monique had this to say. How do you take advice from a man who has no woman? And I love Shaq. But how do you take advice from my brother that has no one? Well, she said, I love my baby. I love my brother Shaq. But who do you open up to? So she, she did disagree with you. She used the word pillow talk. I don't pillow talk. Mm. She used the word uh, Shaq doesn't have a woman. Really, Monique? Monique, really? But who do I open up to? Nobody. But then again, but then again, I'm not gonna be at home pillow talking, tell us in my ear. It's just something I deal with, and I deal with it my own way. You do more than again, talk on that pillow, you know what I'm saying? Yeah, no, nah, yes, exactly. But, but now again, the clip that went viral, this is just me. Yeah. You don't have to use my method. You ask me what I do, and I say no. And but I like it because people can agree or disagree, but this is who I am and yes. I'm not going to change. Yeah, you're not asking other people to do the same just, thing. I'm just saying this is not nothing I do because I'm taught to be a man's man, man. Yeah. If you got problems, deal with it. Don't put those problems on your wife and your kids. Deal with it, sucker. I know a lot of men who speak that way, who just are, don't put anything on the woman, hide it as if she doesn't see through you because they're better and stronger than we are. Uh, can you explain what you just saw there and the general distrust that can be found when you reach Shaquille O'Neal's level <sighs> of superstardom? Um, I never got a chance to reach his level of superstardom, uh, but obviously had my, my time in the league. And uh, this is no laughing matter, but I mean, we get PTSD from our experiences in the league, man. We've had ups and downs goods bads greats uglies so there is kind of a trust factor that comes with sharing our experience we can't share with just anybody um i'm actually in counseling now and funny enough my fiance and i kind of got an argument recently because i had something really serious going on but until it really kind of had a, until i really had a plan for it i didn't share it with her either because i'm from the old school like shack you know we deal you know, mighty is, is the shoulder that wears the crown. So, you know, as a man, we do have to deal with a lot and we do have to put up with a lot. And there's no crying. There's no making excuses. There's no poor me. It's get it done. And I think that's very common in the black community. So, you know, Shaq spoke a language that a lot of us former athletes and a lot. Of, I think a lot of black men in general speak, you know, not really necessarily having the wherewithal or the knowledge to reach out and ask for help. Um, and I'm not saying by any means Shaq needs help. I'm talking about me personally no, from the standpoint it, it of, just, you know, it leaves I, you, it, it leaves you alone though, Matt, it leaves you alone yes. when she's criticizing, she loves him and she's saying he's got no woman. He's alone. And, and she loves him. <laughs> like she's not, she's not yeah. trying to rip him. She's saying, God, I want yeah. better. I want better for you. Be less alone. Yeah. Yeah. No, I, I mean, I think Shaq, and again, I'm, guessing Shaq has plenty of women. He maybe he just may not have a main one or a fiance or a wife, but Shaq has never had an issue uh getting women. Um I think but what it, what it comes down to is again having prior situations where he probably was comfortable enough to share blow up in his face. And, and I've had situations where I was comfortable enough to share in my past uh relationships where it did blow up in my face. So again, I see both sides. I see Monique's side, but I also understand Shaq's side because I've lived Shaq's side. So Again, it, 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 it's a lonely world out there sometimes when you get in a position to where we've been. But also, I, I would recommend, obviously, finding someone to be able to open up to because we go through a lot. We have a lot on our plate. And it is really hard to carry that day in, day out, all by yourself. Um, and, and Shaq says he has his ways of dealing with that that he didn't necessarily share. Um, you know, I'm a big cannabis advocate, and, and that helps me with some. But then also, you know, reaching out and, and, and having counseling and, and understanding 
childhood trauma and past trauma and how that affects the men we are today. So um, I love Shaq to death. That's, that's one of my big brothers. Uh, don't know Monique personally, but I've been a fan of her work, but definitely can relate to where Shaq is coming from when he talks about not really sharing with women because it can be thrown in your face. Stugatz, I will tell you that I sat down for a couple of hours with Stephen Jackson for Friday's South Beach three session. Three hours. Uh, not three hours, oh. just a couple of hours uh, for the most recent South Beach session. And he talked about some of this stuff and told some of the most amazing stories that I have heard uh, because he, he, too, has been hurt by, uh, by women in a way that keeps a great many scars. And I think people will find that interesting. But before I get you out of here, Matt, I'm just curious because I do not know what happened here. You had a public incident this week that uh, some people were videotaping you uh, threatening to slap the shit out of someone. I would not want for you to be threatening to slap the shit out of me under any public <laughs> or angry circumstances. What ha what happened? Why What, what happened here? Uh so what happened when we were at a high, my kids' high school basketball game, and uh, it was a championship, and my kids' team was picked to finish eighth out of eighth, and somehow they found themselves in the championship against Harvard Westlake, who is a nationally ranked powerhouse. Um, so I was yelling at the refs, Dan. I yelled at the refs my entire college career, my 15-year NBA career. Uh, I coach AU in the summertime. I have high school boys, and I have a five-year-old coming down the pipeline. So I'm going to be doing a lot of yelling at the refs um but this particular incident um this kid right here and, and i will say my one mistake was putting my hand on his shoulder a lot of people want to say i grabbed this kid or i did this i literally put my hand on this kid's shoulder because he you know it was almost like i was talking to my son you know what i mean he he told me to sit my ass down and i, I was just like you know why do you feel comfortable enough to be feel like you can tell a grown man to sit his ass down so um he and i had a little back and forth and you know again obviously uh, admitting my faults to, to even touch him was wrong of me but i, I want to make sure it's clear that you know the narrative of me is 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 some guy that beats up people and i, I want to make sure people know i didn't body slam this kid i didn't choke slam him i didn't do any of the sort i literally put his my hand on his shoulder like, you know, it was like I was talking to one of my sons and, and again, for that touching him, uh, I was wrong. But I just didn't like the disrespect that came with uh, the, 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 the entitlement where they felt like they could say anything to me. Not only did that kid say some slick stuff to me, but there was a there was a woman in the stands who actually they caught a picture of flipping me off saying, F you, bitch. And I'm just like, wow, like you really feel that you could just say anything to me. And again, as you can see the video, see, I wasn't talking to their team. I wasn't talking to their players, their cheerleaders, their fans. I was talking to the refs. The foul calls were 25 to nine in that game. So I was well within my right to be yelling at it. But, you know, Dan, we live in a, in a world now where perception is reality. And if the narrative fits and, you know, I am someone who has had a background of handling business, you know. So, again, I didn't want this to get blown out of proportion i even hesitated speaking on it because it has it has died down but i just wanted you know first of all you know apologizing for touching this kid's shoulder uh, i should have never touched him but i did want to know why he felt comfortable enough to tell me to sit my ass down and then i also wanted to know why the lady in the stands felt comfortable enough to say f you bitch to me um but again i didn't get any no, of those answers clearly matt, and it kind of is what it is clearly matt barnes in the wrong here and out, out of control menace filled with fury and right. reputation oh already no yeah. already no but 25 to 9 matt i mean that's you know that's that's, that's ridiculous right ridiculous. i mean you understand yeah, it's right ridiculous. Yeah, it's nuts. <laughs> you completely understand uh matt did you burp earlier yes there was a tremendous burp yeah. uh, there was somewhere in there i was asking you a question i heard someone burp and i thought it was greg cody with vegas <laughs> yeah it was. but, 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 but <laughs> but was it, was it Greg Cody or was it Matt Barnes? There was a, a tremendous. No, it wasn't me. Oh. I haven't ate nothing yet. So All right, so it was Greg Cody. Yeah, sorry. Somebody burped, man. It was <laughs> the apologize. biggest burp in show history. So that I was mean. your contribution to the Matt Barnes <laughs> it conversation. It was a good burp, though. Okay. Yeah. Uh, Burping it. All the smoke, all the smoke productions on YouTube. Uh, we do want to mix our audiences, and you saw with tenor and tone there. I'm glad you did talk about it because there is a TMZization of things, and now you have this oh, reputation. Man. Uh, the reputation that I would like to help you uh, show people, you and Stephen, more of your personality because it is not limited. Appreciate that. You, you don't mind fighting in an alley if you have to, but no, we'd, we'd like no. it to not come to that. <laughs> Absolutely. Peace, peace, peace and love to everybody. So, again, yeah, definitely could admit, you know, Dan, I can definitely admit my fault and in, in obviously put my hand on this kid's shoulder. But like you said, the dramatization and, and the narrative of the past 
played right into the situation and, and, and I'm glad we got a chance to kind of cover it uh, because again, people will run with the, oh, someone hit me on, but you body slammed a kid at a high school game. Yes. I'm like, oh, you're out of damn, control. That's how, yes. that's you're out how of control. fast it, we all it saw went. It. We so. saw the video, you right. body slammed right. him. Right. Right. It was right. obvious right. you were aggressive. You were very aggressive. Man. We all watched it together. Mm -hmm. Yes, quit being right. such an asshole. I've been kicked out right. of lacrosse tournaments, Matt. I could do yes. three hours on it 25 to 9 is a lot. I hear you. Thank you, Matt. I hear you. Good talking to you again, sir. All right, guys. We'll talk soon. See you, Matt.